sometimes when we do storytelling shows, after the performance, we have a talk back, and people in the audience can ask questions of the storytellers. Well, I don't, I don't want to wait for that to happen. And I know the question, be quiet. I, I know the question that you all want to ask. You all want to say, Sandy, how did you learn to play the guitar? This is your turn now, Sandy. How did you learn to play the guitar? I like that question. And uh, so I'm going to tell you how Christine Lavin learned how to play the guitar. Uh, Christine Lavin has been on this stage. Uh, she, she plays the guitar better than I do. Uh, and she tells this story. I liked the story so much that I asked her if I could retell it. And she said, sure, just make sure you remember the devil dog. So... Uh, fairly early in her career, she appeared in San Francisco at the Great American Music Hall. And prior to the, con to the concert, the San Francisco Chronicle interviewed her, and the interviewer asked, how did you learn to play the guitar? And so she told this little story about how when she was 12 years old, she started listening to this weekly television program on educational TV, How to Play Folk Guitar. And the TV that her parents had was inferior. Reception was terrible. It had one of those uh, rabbit ear antennas. And so she would have to bribe her little brother with a nickel, the cost of a devil dog his favorite treat, and coincidentally mine. This is when devil dogs were wrapped in wax paper and they were fresh, no preservatives. Uh, of course, I've never tasted one now to know that there's a difference. <clears throat> anyway, with that bribe, he would hold the rabbit ear antenna out the window so that Christine got good reception for the full half hour of the guitar lesson. So she's told this story. It appears in the San Francisco Chronicle. And Laura Weber, who lived in San Francisco, reads this article, and she decides she's going to go to this concert. And she's wondering if she is the one who taught Christine Lavin how to play the guitar. Well, Christine Levin is about to walk out on stage, and the stage manager hands her a business card. And on the front of the business card, it says, Laura Weber Folk Guitar. And on the back of the business card, it says, Did I teach you how to play? And according to Christine Levin, this put the fear of God into her because she was about to perform in front of her guitar teacher whom she had never met in person. So when intermission comes, she says, uh, can I have the house lights, please? And she says, I've learned that my guitar instructor, my TV guitar instructor, whom I've never met in person, is in the audience tonight. Laura Weber, would you please stand up? And this petite, gray-haired woman stands up, and the crowd goes wild. Well, I can't say that I play the guitar as well as Christine Lavin, but I can tell you that we had the same guitar instructor. <laughs> and when she died, sadly, Laura Weber specified in her will that all of those recordings, those weekly programs for you know a few years' worth of guitar instruction, that none of them be shown again. I think because she wanted to make room for a new generation of guitar instructors, and her lessons were so good they would sort of be in the way. So you can't look up Laura Weber folk guitar instruction on YouTube and find a complete collection of three years' worth of weekly guitar lessons, so I'm going to summarize them for you now. 
Her, her technique for guitar instruction was terrific. She would teach you a little something to do with your left hand, and then a little something to do with your right, and then you'd learn a little song. So, for example, you learn to strum. You brush the backs of your fingernails across the strings, and then you use your thumb. And by gosh, you can alternate the bass with your thumb, and you learn a little song. Skip, skip, skip to Malou. Skip, skip, skip to Malou. Skip, skip, skip to Malou. Skip to Malou, my dar. And then you'd practice that all week long. And I remember, you know, I'm having trouble. It's hard. And in one of these programs, she says, you know, that buzzing you're hearing. Um, Well, I'm trying to get a good buzz now to them. <laughs> she said, you need to move your finger up closer to the fret and press down harder, and the buzz will go away. And I knew that she was talking to me. And it worked. And then there was uh, plucking with your fingers rather than strumming, and then you could play all three fingers together. You could do the thumb and then just the first finger and the second and third fingers together. Every week there was a new thing. You could do all three fingers, the thumb and three fingers in rapid succession. And then let's not forget, you could hammer on. Now this was a little left hand thing where you'd pluck the string with your right hand and then using your left hand you'd play the next note. And in reverse pulling off and then there was the slide. Well week by week technique by technique, song by song. Here's a little bit of an overview. This is The Fisherman, written by Leo Kotke, who is a far better guitarist than I am, but what the heck. Thank you, Laura Weber.